of all ages. This is not the sideshow. This is not the undercard. Nope. We're back with another week of the main event. <laughs> I, I my do, air horn. I do that soft for just that reason. So Ryan can be like, that is the worst <laughs> I've ever. <laughs> the weakest air horn ever. That air horn's been sitting up in the attic for like 10 years. And you yep. thought, uh, forgot about it. He goes like, oh, I wonder if this still works. It's like, <laughs> Ryan Baldwin here along with yeah. the Teflon Talker, yeah. the Colossus of Charisma. Yeah. What was the other one I came up with last or a couple weeks ago? Oh yeah, ago? so I have the list here. Oh yeah, give me the give me the list. The real list. Quick. So the list here we've got folks. It's great. Oh, um, um, yeah, let me read it. Let me get, oh, 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 oh let you read, read it. it. Yeah. All right, go ahead and read it, my man. All right. So these give are it all to the people. Of Mason's nicknames. <clears throat> The God of Gab, the Sauce yeah. King, the Perpetual Motion Machine of Smart Assery, the King of Charisma, the Personification of Personality, the Teflon Taka, the Master of the Mic, the Articulate Assassin, the Overlord of the Oratory Arts, the Locatious One, the Champion of Charm, the Proclaimer of Peons, the Essence of Excellence, number one under God's hot sun, the Archer of Immortality, the Verbal Sharpshooter, the Colossus of Charisma, the finest of the fine, a Mason Shepherd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And again, yeah. How Let was, me talk to you. How is that for, for Man, that was great. You should hype. be you should be a ring announcer. <laughs> That, that that was beautiful. That'll be my side career if, if, if all this if all this goes south. I'll use this oh as my, my demo reel for uh, that ring was, announcer. That was beautiful, Ryan. Oh my god, I'm starting to think you are you're you're, you're maybe not out in the open, secret wrestling fan, just very secret. That was beautiful. All right, so 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 so, I was out last week because of school catching up with me, and I was busy. So Mason, yeah. rightfully so, said. Yo, dog, you're going to keep me from talking when both the Longhorns and the Cowboys won the same week. And I was like, oh, sorry, man. And then what happens this week? Yeah. It turns right back around and we do it again. Woo! So let's start with college football and let's start with everything else before you start popping off. Okay? 100%. Then we'll, got go, no, then we'll go. Got no problem um, with that. In the top 25, nothing particular. There's a couple interesting ones. I guess UCLA beating Utah. UCLA looks like it could be a team. Wait, six and zero. I'm trying to. I'm trying to think. No, that was that was last week. Never mind. Because I was. I know that I told you like a lot of these teams can take a win off of you, and that's exactly what but happened. But it, it's also they. It's also Utah. So I'm still not convinced that well, Utah's not, number not eleven. Not specifically but. that game, but just yeah. like. You know, um, South Carolina t upset number 13, Kentucky. And I say upset mostly because Kentucky was ranked 13. But that that was one of those teams I think we talked about a couple weeks ago where it's like, is Kentucky really, yeah, really that high? And I, I will give you I will give weeks. you credit on that one. You were like, uh, you know, I don't know if they are legit. But, you know, may maybe they're, you know, not too legit to quit. Right. So. I mean, like, Utah's now at two losses. Kentucky's at two losses. Um, BYU somehow got up to 16 before Notre Dame smacked them back down. Yeah. Um, and Washington was ranked 21 and then lost their second. So there's a couple of them in there that are just like, okay, these teams are obviously not actually needing to be in the top 25. Yeah. Um, the other Big 12 game that was... Exciting back and forth. T 17 TCU versus 19 Kansas. And I'm sure you didn't watch any of it because you had eyes focused elsewhere. But yeah. honestly, I'm not going to lie. I did pay attention to like when uh, obviously when they would come up and be like uh, game break. Um, You know, man, I think Max Duggan low key. He's going to be a, a Heisman candidate for sure. wasn't even Kansas's quarterback JT Daniels before he got hurt. Heisman candidate. Duggan has 1,300 yards, 14 touchdowns, and only one interception on the season. And the Horned Frogs move to 5-0 and after beating Kansas. Yeah. Here's what I will say about that game, man. And I, I told this to my dad, and I feel like it's, it's the truth. I feel like it's what we're actually seeing. These guys know that when Texas leaves, and OU, we'll get to that in a minute, when those guys leave, they will... It's a big power vacuum. It's a big power time. vacuum. Yeah. And they will not have the 11 a.m., the 3 p.m. time slot. 
they will get Friday night at 6.30 or 10 o'clock. I think a couple of them will some still of the, have Some yeah. of the big rivalry games, like like uh, Oklahoma State, Baylor, which will be the new teams to carry, you know, that that uh, the Big 12, they'll get the Saturday. I'm not saying they, they won't get Saturdays, but we all know that they will predominantly be moved f- up into, like, the later games or the Friday night stuff, which isn't all that bad. But... These teams are showing up, and it's not even just that, but it's also the fact that, you know, these teams, they've gotten a lot of these, you know, juniors and seniors now. So they were bound to put something together, even if we all felt like, yeah, the Kansas, they're the, they'll never win anything. No, they're putting together a good team. And like, if I'm a Jayhawks fan, which we already know won, I would not be defeated because I lost to TCU. I would not feel that. You are four and one, and teams are taking you seriously. Yeah. So, no, I I would not feel defeated. Um, it was a great game, honestly. Yeah. And I'm honestly excited. And this is coming from someone who has to play them. I am excited to see where they go because I think that people are really, dude. I'm not gonna lie. This is the most invested in college football that I've ever been. Not in a long time because I love college football, but dude, like the feeling of college football this year, it feels different. You have these small teams like who, who are in major conferences. I'm not talking about like like you, uh, Cincinnati, but you have these small teams making a name for themselves, dude. It's kind of interesting to see. Then you got Tennessee and LSU battling it out and things like that. College football is just really interesting right now. Look, I'm not gonna go so far as to say that. Yeah, like th- there's a bunch of teams making a run at it. Yeah. Um, just because, let's be real, the teams that are still at the top in that top like eight are still well and above yeah. anybody else that's below about 12 right yeah. now. And we'll get to those in just a bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's cool to see some of these teams make a run, but we'll see in the upcoming weeks, you're going to start seeing some of those teams that are like, oh, maybe we can make a run. Well, yeah. this is in the next few weeks is when you're really going to have to show it. Yeah. But before we get to that, let's talk about the biggest game in the Metroplex this past weekend. <laughs> it was SMU. No, it was Texas Longhorns <laughs> against the Woo! Sooners in that Red River showdown, 118th time, and a historic one as the Longhorns not only shut down the Sooners, but also put up the biggest point differential in that rivalry history. Hook up, hook up, And it was all done by a dude with the worst mullet I've ever seen in Quinn Ewers. (sighs) Look, he can have that mullet (laughs) until he turns 50. I do not care. A triumphant return, 21 for 31, 289 yards, four touchdowns, one pick. B. John Robinson goes for 22, uh, carries 130 yards for two touchdowns. And on the other side, Oklahoma had one, two, three, four, five different pass attempt personnel, three quarterbacks, a running back, and a punter. And their starting quarterback, Davis Bavell, went six for 12 for 38 yards and a pick. Yep. So, how do you feel about this, Longhorn fan? I feel, you know, like, look. I feel that this is pretty, pretty great. It's it's pretty it's pretty okay. I am ecstatic, Ryan. <laughs> Here's the reason, right? Everybody knows if you know me, if you know the Teflon talker, if you know the finest of the fine. Oh, I wish he could be mine. That would be me. If you know me, then you know how I feel about OU, Arkansas, and AM, right? So seeing my team demolish Oklahoma was beautiful but also it showed me that this Ewers kid he's got some flavor to him there's 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 a little pepper in that pot this kid is incredible right now he's still learning you know I saw when he threw off his back foot and it got picked I was like yeah I saw that coming but at the same time the offense was I've never seen this offense flow this well ever since since Colt McCoy was playing the offense just has this natural flow. It was like, okay, we you know we got this pass play, we got this run play, right? And I know that's dumbing it down, but at the same time, it's like it's spread out, right? The defense had to be kept honest. For once, 
because so many of the previous games, Texas against OU, that that OU offense had not been kept honest. I mean, defense, it had not been kept honest. And I think watching this game, they were rattled. They you you saw that OU defense. They didn't know what to do. It was so funny to me when I saw an OU player get in a Texas player's face because he made a big hit, and then Texas goes right down the field and scores on him. Because that just shows, for one, OU players along with the people, not the brightest bunch. Two, it just shows that Texas they didn't care. Usually Texas would have gotten right back in that guy's face, and they would have had a you know a little scuffle. Texas went right back to the sidelines, went up the field and scored. It just shows that this team is maturing to me, which is huge. And I think that watching that game, watching how Quentin Ewers played, but not just the offense, watching how that defense played, watching how that defense kept OU to nothing. I couldn't ask for anything better than that, dude. I could not ask for a better performance from Texas. Okay, so I'm just going to posit this from a person that has no dog in the fight at all. Yes. To an OU or a Texas fan, does the fact that OU came in without the starting quarterback nope, with the pick gonna, transfer does, nope. does that mean it? Does that change your nope. thought on it at all? Nope. You just say because let, let me explain this to you. If Texas, because let me ask you a question, Ryan. When we played Alabama and we lost Quentin Ewers, what happened? Did we win or lose? We lost. We lost. Does the fact that we have didn't have Quentin Ewers strip that loss from the record books? Nope. nope. So it doesn't happen for OU either. My dad always taught me, and I'm going to give him credit. Shout out to Michael Shepard. Um, things happen in football. But what is the best saying in football? Next man up. OU put their next man up, and they lost. Because guess what? If they had beat us, OU beat Texas. But we beat them handily, might I add. So we beat OU. It's not a we beat OU asterisk, but start that. I don't want to hear. I don't care about that. Okay. I know a lot of people say that, and I know that you're bringing that up because that's a point that people make. Just, yeah, and I was just curious. No, as I to, know. You know, because I know no, there's some because, people that'll be like, "Yeah, we beat Oklahoma, but and it was a great win, but." Yeah. Here's the thing, dude. Doesn't matter. It's football. Not everybody's going to be healthy. Not everything is. If there's one thing about football that makes it similar to everything else in life especially acting for me, nothing is always going to go according to plan. Something is going to change. You could lose a lineman. You could lose a starter. You know how many games Ryan Baldwin that Texas has lost because we didn't have our star offensive tackle, so our quarterback kept getting sacked. We didn't have our star running back, so our running game sucked. Or we didn't have our star wide out, so we had to rely on the tight end and the running game, which also weren't that good. I'm going to say at least two. Exactly. Okay. So... We've had a lot of that. No excuses had to be made. It's next man up. So we beat OU. I know OU fans are going to want to put that asterisk there because they got d -d 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 destroyed. But I don't care what they think because at the end of the day, there is a big fat goose egg next to OU. And there is 49 points on the other side with the Texas Longhorns. So... At the end of the day, because I could come on here and say with full conviction, we have Texas could have been the one to stop the rise of Nick Saban. I'm, I'm joking, but like we could have taken one of those national championships off Saban's record if we had Colt McCoy. I can say that he was one of the best quarterbacks in college football in the nation at that time. Got hurt. We had Garrett Gilbert. We lost. Doesn't change the fact Alabama won, did it? No. I don't hear people going, yeah, but Alabama beat them without Colt McCoy. That's Longhorn fans that say that. And we can and we and we're told to be quiet. So all you Sooner fans, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear we got lucky. I don't want to hear any of that. You got whooped. Take the whooping, Texas, because they've beaten us, I think, the last three years. You got whooped. Take the whooping. Move on and continue to be loser sooners. Just go ahead and take. There you have it, straight from the mouth of a Longhorn diehard. Well, where does that leave us going into next week? Well, that top five has not really changed much, just other than some position shuffling. Georgia, Ohio State, Bama, Clemson, Michigan still in the top five. Number six, undefeated Tennessee has rolled up into that six spot. USC at seven, Oklahoma State eight. 9, Ole Miss, 10, Penn State, 11, UCLA, 
12 Oregon. And that would be your 12 for when they eventually expand the top 25. Now, yep. this upcoming week, Mason, is the first of what I like to call separation weeks. Yeah. Where you're going to start seeing like some of those undefeated teams that are in that top 10 starting to play each other, and you're going to see some of them lose ground yep. because somebody's got to lose. There ain't no ties in college football. Yeah, that's true. For example, kicking off with the Big Ten, Big Noon <laughs> game on Fox, whatever they're calling it. Number 10, Penn State at 5, Michigan. Michigan. Uh, I can already tell you I feel like Michigan's going to take that game. Penn State, and I, I, I love Penn State, but Penn State has a horrible track record at being ranked and then being ranked. Which means, if you don't know what that means, folks, that means smelling really bad. So, Penn State is just, I, I don't know, man. You know, I want to have faith in them, but they have to go to Michigan. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not giving them that. I will say the one thing that I, I think will be nice coming out of the eventual expansion of 12 teams, even though overall I'm not thrilled about it, is the fact that once they expand to 12 teams, it means that your season's not over with one loss, right? Yeah. Like right now, if Michigan loses against Penn State, yeah, they're probably not making it to the CFP the way everything no. else has gone. They they would need a lot of help. Um, at two thirty, mm -hmm. the double whammy of three Bama visiting six Tennessee, and eight Oklahoma State visiting thirteen TCU. That is going to be a big one. Bama may or may not have Bryce Young. Yeah. Tennessee, I don't know if you saw this, they have their starting safety who leads the team in tackles. Yeah. He got arrested over the weekend for aggravated assault felony <sighs> charges. And I don't know what's going on over there at Tennessee. <laughs> but that but they've had three players arrested in the past two months. Yeah. I have no idea what's going on, but they, the last two people that got arrested there in the past two months were also dismissed from the team. That makes sense. So you sense. could very well be also out your starting safety. Whether they dismiss him from the team, suspend him, whatever. Now, I think that that's one of those interesting things about college football, right? Is their reaction to this yeah. is kind of like, well, it, that kind of tells you how much you... Uh, it's it's one thing to do it back in August. It's another thing to do it the week before the biggest game of the season against Bama. Yeah. Uh, TCU hosting Oklahoma State. You know what? I like. I'm going to stick with Max Duggan. I would. I think I he's got... Uh, I know... Sanders, the Oklahoma State quarterback, has been really good this year as well. But I think Max Duggan has a good shot. And I like Sonny Dykes yeah. as the coach for TCU. So I, I think I'll take TCU. They're getting they're three and a half point favorites at home. So I think I'll I'll take them. I think they'll take them over in Fort Worth, Texas. I would. And at then, home. Uh let's see. 6 30 on Saturday, Mississippi State at Kentucky. Um 16 versus 22. Okay game. But I'll probably be if I would pick one to watch. I'm going to be watching USC at Utah um, because if there is this is basically Utah's last gasp at top twenty five spot, and they have to beat USC to mm -hmm. do it. Which if they do again, USC's season is basically over, and Lincoln Riley and Cam Williams or or Caleb Williams are basically done for the season because of that one loss. Pretty much. Um, but yeah, if USC wins, that's a pretty. I mean, that's one of your marquee wins, and when it comes to that top four, trying to squeeze in there. So yeah, first separation week coming up this week. It's going to be oh so sweet. Plenty of games to watch, and we'll take a break after that. Though the NFL week five in the books, we gonna talk about it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, plenty to talk about. So don't go nowhere. We'll be back in a bit. Which one is that? Fox or CBS? We're, I thought you were going for Universal. You don't, no, that's <laughs> no. I was going for the. For, I was going for the NFL. What? No, that's uh. That's Fox. Is that Fox? Yes. Which one is? That's Monday. That's ESPN Monday Night Football. Oh, is that Monday Night Football? Well, good. It's Monday, so that works. <laughs>
<laughs> Main event's back. Ryan Baldwin, Mason Shepard, NFL Time Talk. That was my segue that I totally just that I totally butchered there. You should have gone. You should have done CBS. Which one's the CBS? <laughs> You have you haven't heard that? Or paid attention to it? I'm sure. Uh, well, all the Cowboys games are on Fox. Yeah, I know. Which, so. which I get that, but it's like, or you could have done Sunday <laughs> Dude, Night Football. At least in the regional ones, I feel like the CBS are all the ones that you don't really care about and only go to <laughs> at least like for here in Texas. Because I feel like the Eagles or the Giants are always on Fox as well. Yeah. So like, if I'm watching a game, it's usually on Fox for whatever reason. Yeah. No, it makes sense. And then CBS is just. Whatever is if the first game is terrible. Yeah, no, yeah, pretty much. Speaking of terrible games, let's start with Thursday night football. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god. That was the no joke. That may have been the worst football game I have ever had the pleasure of going to bed early and missing. Because I had to be I had to be up early. Like I had to be downtown at like five AM on Friday morning. So I was like, nah, I'm not gonna like I'll 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 read about it tomorrow. And I am so glad that I did not watch that game. Colts beat the Broncos 12 to 9 in overtime. Overtime! Boo! You can only put up 12 points in Boo! overtime? Dude, I don't know what has happened to Russell Wilson, but do not let that man cook anymore. That I heard, man is burning things left and right. I heard um I heard someone say this, and it's the truth. I think it was Russo actually. He's lost his confidence. I think he has. I think he's lost yeah. his confidence because Russell Wilson is not playing like Russell Wilson. It's really hurting his legacy, to be completely honest. I'm kind of curious as to whether his he just doesn't fit in the scheme and that Pete Carroll is actually like a genius for the most part, getting Russell Wilson comfortable and in the scheme. Yeah, I think, and I'm going to say this, as bad as decisions as coaches make, uh, A&M, for one, when they lost their game the way they did, I think they also do not get enough credit. I think Pete Carroll did a great job. Like you said, it, I'm going to use wrestling term. He got Russell Wilson over in the sense of, like, it was in a system Rus Russell was comfortable with, but the the Pete also did fail when he couldn't put pieces around Russell to help him. I agree. Like I'm not even talking about like a wide receiver because Tyler Lockett's pretty good. I'm talking about like an old line. And some dude named DK Metcalf up there. Exactly. Like, so I'm talking about an old line, man. Like they couldn't put any pieces around him. Can we also just talk about the fact that if I'm ever on a fourth down play within like five yards of the end zone? I am never calling a passing play with Russell Wilson as the quarterback ever again, bro. <laughs> I can't believe after you had Marshawn Lynch yeah. and Pete Carroll, you, you talk, as good as he was, you, you talked about the bad decisions he made. That yeah. was one of them bad decisions. Gets picked off in the Super Bowl. Fourth and two. Yeah. Russell Wilson doesn't see the man streaking right across the middle on a slant route wide open. No, tries to fit it in and gets it tipped away to lose the game. I'm just saying, like, I'm handing that ball off. From now on. Yeah, you Russell know. Russell Wilson is never getting that ball again on that kind of situation ever again. Yeah, that was that was horrible. I, I still have nightmares about that game. And I thought it couldn't get any worse. And then Atlanta played. And then I was like, oh, no, it, it, it got worse. And then on Sunday, let's see. Across the pond over in Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, my Premier League team stadium. Come on, you Spurs. Oh, your Premier League Stadium. Premier, my Premier League Stadium. That's uh, nice. The Giants beat the Packers, which yes, I think actually kind of surprised. It surprised a lot of people. Pretty much everybody. Yeah. Okay, you can stop. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're going back over across the pond. <laughs> where I think my biggest surprise game was probably how badly the Jets beat the Dolphins. And I know... I know there was no Tua, but I just didn't expect the Jets to hang 40 on a Dolphins defense that has been pretty solid so far. Hey, look, the way I see it, Tua doesn't play. Tua wasn't on defense, pal. The, the Jets just hung 40 on him. I know, but like the, the Dolphins <laughs> defense has been solid leading yes. up into this you game. You know what hurts? You know what hurts me? I mean, I didn't pick them, but it hurts me that the Dolphins, they start out and they're the hottest thing for two weeks. Three weeks. Three. 
Because they beat the Bills in week two. Yeah, they, and they're their hottest thing for three weeks. And then they lose to the Bengals. Boom. And now they've lost to the Jets. Boom. Again, minus two. Uh, so are they three and two? They are three and two. Yeah. And so I guess it really kind of, you know, it's one of those things where, like, imagine. Dragons. If, <laughs> imagine if Cooper Rush had come out and gone, like, 0 oh and 2 to start. Yeah. How much more difficult is it on the defense to make plays consistently? Like, do you feel like the defense plays like almost too hard, tries too hard to make plays, mm. ends up getting burned when you know that your quarterback is not able to perform? Yeah. You know, excuse me. I think that if I'm being honest, I think what's helped Cooper rush is the fact that and I know it's not what we're talking about here, but it, 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 in the sense of him himself. But I think to answer your question, what helped Cooper Rush was the fact that everybody had low expectations. Yeah, not people not in the Cowboys organization, obviously, but like all of us. My dad, we were on the phone, and he said, "Well, our season's over." I think we even said that in the office. We were like, "Yeah, Dak's out. We're done." Well, I mean, and then Cooper came in, and and you know, look where we are now. Okay. And I think that that helps because. There was no pressure on him to perform. To be fair, I don't think there's any pressure on uh, this dude named Skylar Thompson, who was a seventh round draft pick by the Dolphins from Kansas Out State. Of Kansas State. Kansas State. Yeah. I don't think there's any. No, no, there's, there's no, pressure, no on pressure on him. On I, I him. think, but at the same time, okay, for one, Kansas State can't put quarterbacks in the league. Let's just dismiss that myth now. Josh Freeman was the one they had with the most name value, and it has never been replicated for good reason. But at the same time, you know, with Skylar Thompson in his position, no, there's no pressure on him to perform, but he's a rookie, right? By definition of rookie, he is allowed to suck his first year. He's, And I know that's a very comedic way of putting it, but he is. He's allowed to be bad. He yeah. is a rookie, you know? And plus, he wasn't, gonna, he wasn't expected to play. I do think Tua's career probably needs to wrap up because he's had injuries all three of his years. I am concerned about Very whether so. he's even going to be the same person coming I, out after I, all this. I, I think people are just probably, because I think he's probably just going to ha hang it up. And I hate that for him, but I just don't see what he's going to do. Like, I just think, I just think Tua is like, in a very bad position because what happened his first year? It was leg injury. Then the second year, his shoulder, I think. I may be getting these wrong. Well, he and he all that all that was coming off of the hip injury. Yeah. Right? Yeah. All that was on the back of him not even or of not having the off season in his rookie year because he had that big hip injury. Yep. Um towards the end of his Alabama career, I believe. Yeah. So So it's just one know. of those things where it's like I th I think Tua is going to have to make a tough decision. Uh, you know, I I hope that he's you know will be okay in his regular life because we've we've seen what can happen to NFL players when they are not taken care of. And I think that I you know I hope that Tua is okay in the sense of he will be Tua. Um, but I I think he might need to consider a change. And I think the reason why this is a big deal and why we've kind of segued folks to to a little bit of a serious topic. And then we get back to games. Is that this has caused a lot of controversy for the NFL, man? Because the the ne ne the neurologist that worked with them he got fired. No longer has a job. Well, he was an independent. Like so, the neurologists that are part of the, that do these screenings are independent neurologists that are agreed upon by the Players Association and the NFL. They don't work for any one team. Yeah. And they already were just like, nah, dude, you're done. So, and, yeah. Uh, the news came out, of course, that they're going to be reviewing and changing the protocol. The agreement's already been made between the Players Association and the But that NFL. was really scary, man, just because I think we we categorize so much on concussion. You know, you you get that helmet to clang, you know. And no, he got thrown. Like, I'm pretty sure people who have not seen the video think that someone just went head on and just boom and just, just trucked him. No, he got slung down in his, it was whiplash. Bang, and I think that's something to where it's it, it it's really scary, man. And I and I really feel for the guy because, and I'm not saying this as a joke. I'm I'm really being honest and really being serious. I have no connection with this this culture. I I am not of Polynesian heritage that I know of. 
but they quarterback wise, because they've had people like Seau and Palomalu, quarterback not quarterback wise, especially the state of Hawaii needs a win. Because and I'm, again, I'm being very serious when I'm saying this. Mariota didn't pan out, and now Tua is going to have to cut his career short potentially. And the Dolphins were doing really good. Yep. And now Teddy Bridgewater's got a concussion. So it, I think the NFL, or as like everybody likes to call them, the No Fun League. I think that they are going to have a lot of conversations over these next few weeks, maybe this entire year, because it's not like this This is something that's going to be like, okay, we talked about it one week, we're done. They're going to be having conversations a lot on just how to make football safer, but also just how to incorporate better ideas. Like um, maybe they'll you know, enforce a rule where every team's gym has to have an iron neck. You know that, that thing you use to strengthen your neck muscles that prevents concussions when what we just saw happen to Tua, when you get slung down and your neck falls to the side and then your head hits the surface. Maybe they do that. I don't know, but I know that they've got to do something besides change the rules. Well, the only issue is, I mean, th- when some of these guys are throwing you around, there's no amount of no. lifting that's going to be able to keep you from your head getting smacked in. And on a separate side, not slightly separate side note, I actually think not merely people like I don't uh, that I've seen brought this up, but I actually think that roughing the passer call on Tom Brady, which when you slow it down is by all means not a great call. No, but I don't think that's a roughing the passer penalty if what had happened to Tua had not happened two weeks prior. Because if you look at it, they were both thrown down in a pretty similar manner. Yep. The only difference was Tom Brady was not as violent, and I think that maybe the NFL went and said, look, we can't have guys slinging quarterbacks because of what happened to Tua. And so the referee threw the flag on that, probably because he'd seen the play, and it probably looked vi- It did look violent in real time. It, it was. It wasn't. It, when you slowed it down, it obviously wasn't as bad. But I do think that that's part of that call, and you may see more of a focus from these referees trying to keep quarterbacks from just being, like, slung. There's only so much you can do to, like, when somebody makes a good form tackle, but I think they're going to try and cut down on players just being tossed. Yeah. I think that's going to be really hard to police just because like, say for instance, right. If I'm grabbing Saquon Barkley, right. Which I would not want to do because that seems like a very unpleasant time. But if I'm grabbing him and he's still churning with his legs and he's still pushing, and he's still pushing and I'm using all my strength and I'm just like, that's the only way I got to get him down. I don't want to be penalized for that. Now, I understand there's a difference. Like, if you're 300 pounds and you're running up and you grab the quarterback, and 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 then, you know, you just kind of... I think, and because we've seen different examples of it, I think, you know, because it's the same way that... Because isn't it like uh, unnecessary roughness when they slam people? Like, you pick them up and then you drop them. I think it's going to be like that where... If it's Derrick Henry and you've got him in the middle, but he's still moving forward, and then you just happen to like lift him and drop him, they kind of leave you alone. But if it's blatant, ah, like, and what, I and like think wrestling, re- then yeah. Yeah, what will really differentiate it is like when you see these throws from against Tua and Brady. Yeah. They're relatively still. I think uh Tua is trying to run away, but it's the angle that they that the defensive uh lineman yeah. takes and how they throw him, right? Because they're like as they're going by, they're grabbing them, and then that extra momentum as they swing them around, yeah, brings a of, lot more force. I don't think was Brady's feet off the ground, or was or were they like still on the ground? No, he, Tua he, he came he, up, he, not as much as Tua. Yeah, Tua's not nearly as big as Brady, no. I believe. Um, no, <laughs> Tua's actually not even close to being as big as Brady is. But yeah, I, it's just when they go by, and then that extra momentum because they're already by him. Yeah, so it's the extra kind of like centripetal force of grabbing them and then turning with them and slinging them down. And when you're throwing them and you grab them by the midsection and falling backwards, that head is the first thing that goes back. Right. So that's probably, I mean, that's part of what happened to it. That first thing, it, his back hit and then his head followed shortly after. Yeah. So I think you're going to see a lot more of uh, cut down, which if they're going to do, by the way, the NFL needs to tell players like, look, we're going to start penalizing this if you wrap up and like kind of wrap and throw. Yeah. Um, because then I think you'll see more players go for him square on. Yep. Um, or just like let him go if they know that he's going to, you know, 
get penalized for it. Yeah. Um, it kind of changes your approach to it. But the NFL what, needs to let them know. Yeah, because what was that play? And you'll know what I'm talking about. I think it was Packers uh, somebody. And the quarterback had already gotten rid of the ball. And this lineman comes and just dumps him. Oh, yeah. That was back in like the 80s or 80s. something. Yeah. Because it, it was when they didn't have grass. Well, and it was the, when the guy had, uh, he had already injured his shoulder, and yep. the lineman just came up and drove him on that shoulder. And it was like, I mean, that was a dirty play. Yeah, 100%. It was it, dirty. Because that ball had was gone. It wasn't like a shortly gone. No, that it was ball like, was gone. It wasn't like, oh, it was like. That ball was gone, oh. and it was a good five seconds afterwards that the lineman came And then he just, just grabs yeah. him, and he just, well, I think it was, was it Packers? I'm going to, Packers, uh commanders by their former name uh because i knew you would know what i was talking about lyman just comes up and boom just dumps him i think this is the clip right here but while we wait for that yeah i think it's uh i think it is uh one of those things where it's just it, it, it's gonna get changed here just because i don't think you can keep Allowing players to get tossed around at the no, quarterback position. No, yeah, you can, and and like, but man, I just like I think here's the thing, and I think this is what kind of, I think this is what kind of upsets people, quote unquote. Um, I'm all against the NFL and calling them the no fun league when they when they. Uh, you know, take away like touchdowns. Like, why can't you do a dunk on the goalpost? That's dumb. Like, you, you you shouldn't penalize that. That's not doing anything. But when people say it's the no fun league because they don't want people, I don't know, being slung down. Like, yeah, referees are not always going to get that call right. But at the same time, that happened when they started football, and it's going to happen until well forever because football will never be a sport that's not being played. So. And yeah, it was Packers Bears. Bears, that's what it was. Um, yeah, and the guy just came and uh, just absolutely pile drived him. Uh, all right, well, let's transition into the Cowboys then. Uh, so <laughs> the boy, I know you didn't really care. Look, it's not. So I'll just, I'm going to say this for this episode so that I can then actually for us proceed to talk about the game from a neutral perspective. Mm-hmm. I am not buying into the Cowboys, as I've said before, until yes. they actually win a playoff game. Yes. All that being said, like, and just to clarify what I mean, I mean the Cowboys could win every game from here on out, go 16-1, and one, win the NFC, and I still will not buy in until they win that first playoff game. And then maybe I'll be like, okay, maybe this team's got something. But no, I've been burned by this team far too many times for me <laughs> to take that seriously. All that being said, this defense is fantastic. I'm still not sold on the offense. I still don't think that they've the only team that is I would what I would call a good team, which is the Buccaneers, they lost to. Yeah. But all things considered, Cooper Rush has done a great job of not screwing things up. And that's really all you need when your defense is playing this well, right? Just don't give them any interceptions, don't give them any free plays in your own side. Let the defense work, and the defense went to work, and they won the game for the Cowboys because yep. the Rams only scored 10 points. Yep. So, Cowboys had a great win. I, I, I think my favorite part was on that short uh, yardage situation where they had Zeke as, like, the fullback and yep. Pollard as the, the uh, tailback yep. in a goal line set. Yep. More of that, please. Because especially when – imagine when Dak comes back. Imagine everything that you could run out of that. A Pollard sweep, a Zeke dive from the fullback position, fake handoff, have Dak roll out to a tight end, fake handoff, have Dak run a naked bootleg and get to the pylon, you know, or have like Zeke kind of square off on from that fullback spot, pretend to block, and now he's out into the end zone. Yep. So many good things you could run out of that formation on the goal line. Please bring that back. Um, I think... The only uh, overall, like I said, I think the offense played pretty well. I know Tyler Smith got his ass handed to him by Aaron Donald, but to be I fair, think we all expected Aaron, that Aaron Donald hands everybody their ass at some Wait, point. Wait, you just cuss on here? I just realized and, that. You, you, we can say I already said smart assery. Oh earlier, yeah, yeah, so yeah that's I think fair. ass is fine, but yeah, but no, um, 
but it's Aaron Donald. It's Aaron That's Donald. To be yeah, you're looking at like going like, uh, okay. Um, and, and nothing, nothing helps you learn be- how to do your position better than getting your butt handed to you. And I do think that, um, I I think Diggs had a solid game as well, despite the fact that he got burned a couple of times. The only reason he got burned was. Matthew Stafford on that first one, uh, that first deep ball over the top. Yeah. He placed that literally perfectly. If that was short by an inch, yep. Diggs has a hand on that. Yep, 100%. And that's just something that you live with as with Trayvon Diggs as a corner because he's going to rely on his athleticism to catch up to the receiver. Yes. Like, that receiver was by him, and he made no it's like attempt to bump him, you know, press at the line, whatever. So that's just what you live with when he takes those chances. Because again, an inch shorter, he knocks it away. Two inch shorter, he's he's picking that off. Tray, Trayvon is a ball is an athletic ball playing corner. Yeah, he is not. He's not Revis Island. He's not because Revis played the receiver, one hundred percent. He played the receiver. That's why Revis Island was like, well, you know, going on lockdowns, Revis Island. Because he would play you. Yeah. And he was so good at it that when the ball would come your way, you weren't catching it or he would. Diggs is an athletic guy who plays the ball. You see it when the ball comes and he doesn't even, the receiver's like right here. He's not even looking. He's looking at that ball because he's trying to go up and grab it, which is not a bad, uh, uh, you know, it's not, it's not a bad way, but it's also not a complete way. You know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, it's... Like, there's different styles of corner. I understand that, but at the same time... It's his style that you, as a fan, you're going to have to, like, you're you're going to have to realize this as since he's your starting corner. You're going to have to realize that just based on how he plays, the quarterbacks in the NFL are good enough that occasionally they're going to drop one right into the bread basket, and yeah. it doesn't matter how athletic... No, Diggs yeah, is, it doesn't, no. It, he can't defend it. No. He can't block it if it's, no. like half an inch past his fingers. Yeah. Or if Cooper Cup makes a one-handed catch on the run and is all of a sudden good. That one I don't blame on Diggs either. No. Because Co- Cup does that to everybody. Pretty much. Uh, Again, okay, uh, yeah. you learn by getting your butt hands And he to doesn't you. line up in the slot all that often. So yeah. I, I give him that one. Um, Micah Parsons, I'm hoping, is going to be okay for the Eagles game because I know I think, we're going I to think he'll him. be fine. Um, but What yeah. a... Micah the Terminator Parsons, because he will always be back. Yeah. Oh, God, I love that kid. That uh, okay. So also that catch by Michael Gallup. The catch was great. The, the, like I said, it was oh, a good it was win. Ridiculous. It was a good win overall, and I think it when the Cowboys defense is playing like this, it takes so much pressure off the offense, right? Because you're yep. just like, okay, if we can get twenty points, we're good. Once again. Third week in a row, Dallas closed. That yeah. it blows my mind just because I'm so used to Dallas letting people not. But Dallas closed a game they closed against the game. defending Super Bowl champ. Because didn't we also beat Cincinnati? Yes. So we beat even though we did not beat Tampa, which I understand your position on that. I am not trying to take that away from you. I agree with you because that is st- – look, it's kind of like Alabama in football. Georgia may be the defending national champions. Alabama's still the big one. The Brady was nowhere near the Super Bowl. Yeah, He's still the big one. This I get is more it. like, though, beating Clemson when you know that yeah. Clemson is not the same team that yes. they were a few years ago. They're still a good team. But and they have that no legacy, que- but yeah. There's no question that the Rams and the Bengals aren't playing at the same level that they did last year. No, 100%. And, you know, and and that's the thing. Like, I will, and I agree with that. But it's still good that Dallas can put on their resume that they beat Cincinnati and that they beat the defending, they beat the Super Bowl runner-up and they beat, well, instead of saying that, I can say that they beat the defending AFC champions and they beat the reigning Super Bowl champions in their house, which they won the Super Bowl in. So, um, yeah. So I, I just think that, you know, it's, it's, I, but I, I've taken more of an approach to like, anytime I see myself getting excited because Dallas won, I'm like, okay, settle down. Cause we still got more to go and I want to see them win a playoff game. So, 
But beyond that, yeah, I think that Dallas is really, really, uh, I don't want to say stepping up, but I think Dallas is really doing a good job of just being even keel. And I think that's really important. So I'm happy with uh, I'm happy with Dallas's performances so far. Um, I'm glad that we have our team ignoring the noise that our stupid owner and a lot of these ignorant fans are spewing out with this. It's rush hour stuff. Cooper Rush is very serviceable and he's doing a good job. We have a starter for a reason. And just let's see how it goes. If Dak comes out and flops, we know what we we know what we need to do. He comes out and wins, shut up. So because it, it and we discussed this a couple weeks ago, football is a game of chance and choice. And a lot of people think choice outweighs chance and it doesn't. Yes, having Dak go down was chance. Putting Cooper Rush in was both because, you know, they could have chose Will Greer, but obviously not. Cooper Rush winning, it's great. That is still chance, guys. So people who are just like, oh, he's way better than Dak, shut up. This is, you know, knock on wood. We still got plenty of season left to go. Like our bye week isn't until November. So we got plenty more football to play. So I think that it's, you know, we need to settle down. Because I, I love how you've been about it where it's like Cooper Rush is – and it, it's not because – and I can say that to you because you are not a pro Dak guy in the sense of like, you know, you criticize him, whereas I don't as much just because, look, man, if you got Romo out of the way, you already have the key to my heart. But the, what I'm saying is is that – but you're still not one of those like, Cooper Rush for the starter, Dak can sit on the – no, because it's not how this works. It's not how it should work. It, now, if if Dak comes out and goes 0-3, yeah, then no, we no, no, start no, talking what about I'm saying. it. But yeah, no. If he goes 0-3, put Cooper Rush in. You will have my full support. But I don't need these fans who are like, Dak lost one game. Put Cooper Rush in. Okay? Chance and choice, guys. Dak came back. We put him as starter. That was a choice. He lost. That was chance. Now, obviously, your play and your practice and your skills – Help either or, but at the same time, can go either way. So that it's like Nick Foles. Chance, Philadelphia. I mean, well, choice, staying in Philly. Chance, he wins a Super Bowl. Choice, goes off. Chance, he sucks. It's just how it is. Well. Dropping some philosophy and football on y'all, man. I was not ready to be philosophized go, <laughs> going into today's show. Boom. Uh, Cowboys will take on the dreaded and feared undefeated Philadelphia Eagles next week. That that'll be the big one. And that is that, in my opinion, that's the test of what this Cowboys team is and this Eagles team, right? Because there's oh, yeah. a lot of talk of you know, are the Eagles for real? They've all, they beat the Lions, Commanders, Jaguars, the Cardinals team that really kind of beat themselves, and the Vikings are the only team with a winning record that they've beat. Yeah. So, yeah, the Eagles. This, it look. People pretend like it's still Cowboys Giants that is the big rivalry game in the NFC East. It's Cowboys Eagles. It's Cowboys and Eagles, yeah. So we'll see what happens with that one. All right. We will take one more break and then we'll do a little bit of a sports roundup here because some stuff <laughs> happened. Sports. Uh, there was a round going on. Duh. Just nobody rang the bell. Happened. And we'll talk about it next. Welcome back to the main event. Ryan Baldwin, Mason Saper, still here, still talking sports. You know it. And it's time for a little sports roundup. Again, there there was definitely a round in sports. Ding, ding. Okay, so first <laughs> things first, Jordan Poole and Draymond Green. And let me just start off by saying, <laughs> whoever leaked this video... <laughs> On the one hand, I have not seen it. You haven't seen it. I have not seen it. You got to pull that up, okay, man. I have so not seen it. On the one hand, whoever leaked this video, that was a very dumb thing to do, and it may cost you your job and follow up a little. Game. I mean, it will cost you your job if they find you, and there could very well be plenty of litigation, um, to follow because this was a closed practice. 
On the other hand, I appreciate you because this gives us this much more material. Yes, yeah, I was about. worried. I, w I wasn't gonna have it. So here, I'll describe this as we uh, as we go here. So we are right here in practice. Draymond Green and and Jordan Poole have been jawing back and forth. Great Draymond on the right, Jordan Poole on the left. I feel like I'm doing a little play by play. So Draymond Green walking from the three point line. Jordan Poole's obviously been jawing at him. Draymond Green yeah. doesn't like it. He walks up, gets in his chest. Pool with the shove. Bam! Oh! Draymond just knocked him out. Like, he straight up... Ooh. He just straight up walked up, chest to chest. Pool doesn't like that. I'm a man. <clears throat> Boom. <clears throat> you sure you a man? It's bad. It is... So see, I th see, when you hear the reports, you think, oh, you know... You think, oh, you know, uh, you know, he punched him, like a Steve Smith. Maybe he punched him, you know, you know, got him in the nose. No, he that was a he, full on. That was a that was a right blunt. hook with anger. He dropped him. That was a right hook with anger applied to it. And so here's here's the other thing too. I I don't care what a guy says to you. Apart from straight up like insulting your family or yeah. your children or trying to attack you in that way, there's no need to just straight up yeah, no. deck a guy yeah, like that. He, and, he dropped him. And, you know, if there's anybody that would know anything about this, it'd be Steve Kerr. Yeah. The head coach who got in a fight with Jordan at practice back in the 90s, as we all know from the Last Dance documentary. Yep. So... There's still no official word on what was said to the other person, as far as I can tell, that <laughs> caused this kind of deal. I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. I don't think it matters. He um, pretty much just he, he KO'd the guy. The Warriors GM, uh, I think his name is Bob Myers, said they are going to handle it internally. Um, uh, yeah, but I, he didn't expect Green to miss any regular season game time, which I'm like, okay, dude, well... Whatever you say, you're the GM. You're the GM, bro. And now Draymond has said he's going to be stepping away from the team, quote unquote, indefinitely, uh, and give the team some space. And he also said he apologized to. <laughs> what George is this team? A bitter ex girlfriend? <laughs> I'm going to be stepping away from the Warriors. Uh, you know, I got to give him some space. I I don't know. So here's the, uh, the here's the last thing that I'll say on this. This does not surprise me in the slightest. Well, it's Draymond, so it shouldn't. Draymond has this arrogance about him. Yes, him and he does. Lance Stevenson are like cut from the same cloth where they will <laughs> get up in your grill and not care what you do. Yeah. And they are the epitome of can dish it out but can't take it. Oh, yeah. Like, they will talk your ear off. They'll get all up in your grill. Like, didn't we just do a segment last semester about Draymond Green's podcast and how he was throwing shots out left and right? Yeah, but Kendrick Perkins. And Kendrick Perkins. And Kendrick told him, hey, bro, if you, if, you, if you bought it, say it to my face. Yeah. And Draymond had to go back. That's the thing, and I think that's one of the biggest reasons that people don't take Draymond Green for, even though he knocked this guy being a punk, is because... Being a punk doesn't mean like, oh, I'm a, a punks can't fight. No, that's not saying that. Obviously, Draymond can. He knocked this guy out with literally no problem. But that's not what being a punk is. Being a punk is it's what you just described. Oh, you can dish it out, but you can't take it, can you? You you can't take it when someone because look, it does. I don't care if Jordan Peel, Peel Pool. It's so funny. Pool, peel. Make a fun Keaton Peel skit. Right? Well, I, I would love to see that, actually. But here's the thing. I don't care what the guy said. You know, I think athletes, really society, I think athletes really just, you know, just grow up, you know. You know, it, it's not a big deal because here's the thing. If I know Draymond, like we all know Draymond, he punched this guy because this guy said something, uh, he punched this guy because this guy had something to say that he didn't like. It wasn't that this guy was, you know, using racial slurs because Lord knows Draymond can do that on his own. It wasn't that this guy said anything about his family. It's because Draymond didn't like what he said. And that's soft to me. Yeah. And that that's, that's soft to me because... Let, let's just put things in perspective, shall we? 
as you've stated, Draymond Green has literally cussed out a lot of people on the Warriors, especially Kevin Durant when he was there. This man was bold enough to tell Kevin, Kevin Durant what he thought of him, but he's not man enough to take it from somebody else. He's, he's not capable of, you know, just being like, okay, fine. You know, you, you got this one in here. Just, you know, just know that's the only one you're going to get. He has to punch him. Keep in mind, for those of you who don't know and don't understand why this is a big deal, it's not just because Draymond hit a teammate. It's because that teammate did more for the Warriors. Not more than Draymond's done, but I was going to say more than people would expect. Like, he is the fourth Splash brother. Yeah. And Draymond going off hitting him is just one of those things where it's like, no, you can't do that, especially since this guy, oh, I don't know, is actually valuable to our team. Like, this guy's not a joke. No. So well, I, I I think the biggest thing for me is that I think that Draymond Green is soft and he can pretend like, oh, I, I knocked him out, so I'm 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 a big man. Dude, it's soft. Um, what else happened this weekend? Well, we had the, one of the biggest collapses in MLB recent memory, uh, the New York Mets. Do you know how long an, M an MLB season is just in number of days? Uh, no. 187. I was close. I was going to say 180. The New York Mets were in first place in their division for 175 of those days. Nice. They lost... Three games in a row, yeah, in a regular season series against the Braves, and ended up losing first place in the division on the last day of the season in a tiebreaker to the Braves. Wow, sounds about right. Then in the wild card, they were eliminated by the San Diego Padres in three games over the weekend. <laughs> a hundred and seventy-five days in first place in the division, which, by the way, would have gotten them a bye and yeah. not had to deal with the wild card. And then instead they have to play in the wild card and get swept. This was after a new owner came in and boosted the payroll because there's no there's no like hard there's like luxury tax, but there's no hard salary cap in baseball. Mm -hmm. So you can pay whatever they want. They boost the payroll to two hundred and seventy four million and it's the Mets first time as baseball's biggest spender since nineteen eighty nine. So the first time in 33 years that you are the biggest spender in MLB history, mm. 175 days in first place, mm. and now you're on your couch. As the great former uh, manager for the Texas Rangers, Ron Washington, used to say, that's the way baseball go. You're not a big baseball guy. No, I, I thought no. I thought it was interesting. No, it's it's interesting. I mean, you brought up Ron Washington, who my family calls Seed Spitter. So, jeez. No, I mean, no, he, not he, as a negative. I thing. know. I just he, I just that's an odd nickname for him. Well, he would always have sunflower seeds. Um. What, oh yeah, coming out today, the Panthers, the Carolina Panthers. I was gonna mention this. fired head coach Matt Rule, <laughs> and the defensive coordinator after a one and four start. I mean, to be. This was probably coming. This was a long time coming. Didn't he long time coming? Didn't he just how long is Matt how long was he there? Um he Because he was had, Baylor's old head coach. I think it was two years. Eleven and twenty seven. Um twenty twenty, yeah. So he came in in twenty twenty. And in his defense, he had Cam Newton. In his last year of like playing with the Panthers, then he had Teddy Bridgewater, who was released after one season. Yep. Then they traded to the New York Jets for Sam Darnold. Oh boy. Then they ended up with Baker Mayfield. On the other hand, you did have Christian McCaffrey, but he was injured for a lot of that. So yeah. look, I mean. It, I'm not going to say this is all I don't have Matt any, Rule's fault. I don't have any sympathy for him. Black coaches get cut like this every day. Got no sympathy. I'm not saying that he deserved it, like that he's a bad coach, because I don't know if he got a long enough sample size 
No, he didn't. But like I said, yeah, I'm this not, happens I'm not to saying, black coaches all the time. I'm not saying he deserves sympathy, but I'm just yeah, saying I this know. is one of those ones where the NFL is just like, all right, you got your two and a half seasons. Uh, in the NFL, in those three seasons, you were tied for 30th in total QBR, 29th in offensive efficiency, 29th in yards per game, and tied for 27th in points per game. You're done. That's it. Yeah. You're done, kid. You're fired. You're fired. Um, so... I don't think they've announced an interim coach yet. I haven't seen one. No, they have. They have? Who's yeah. the who's the interim? Let me go to handy old ESPN. The one so the thing about the ESPN article that I'm reading right here, it says they've Matt Rule's been fired as a coach of the Carolina Panthers less than six full months after owner David Tepper said it could take five, maybe six years to rebuild an organization capable of sustained excellence. Well, yeah, if you're going to rebuild over five, six years, I'm not going to keep that same coach that slogged through the BS. I'm just going to start a new coach. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> if I'm planning five, six years down the road, I'm going to go ahead and rebuild with a new coach. Why not? Oh, I mean, there, that, there it is. Defensive pass game coordinator Steve Wilkes was named. Yeah, the Steve Wilkes. I was trying to remember the name, but yeah, you know, no, I agree with that. Look, if that's your, but see, and the, but see, that's why you can get behind it. If that's if that's the goal, then more than hey, man, you know, that's the goal. You want to rebuild. It's not anything personal. We just want to rebuild, yeah. so you're out. And I think part of I think when when uh, maybe the issue is when people think rebuild, a lot of people just think players. Mm-mm. No, rebuild can include coaching staff too. You just get a full clean sweep out of there. Yeah, no, like rebuild is not like you said. It's not just a players thing. Rebuild is one of those things where if Carolina wants to be back where they were when they, when they when they went to two Super Bowls and win them, but when they went back to two of them, they, are, you know, maybe does maybe change does need to happen at the top. Besides, like, you know, obviously the owner, not ownership or even like GM or just, you know, but like coaching, you know, maybe yeah. that does need to change. Uh, there is one that one of those things where I'm like, I just refuse to believe a team that has Christian McCaffrey can rank at the bottom consistently in every single one of these categories. And they had some pretty good receivers out there, too. Um, Funches. Yeah. Uh, what's it? What's his name? Uh, the short dude that is got the. Like, I know the who you're talking about. He's really skinny and looks like he probably shouldn't be out there playing football. Is it Robinson? Is that his last name? I think it's um. It's gonna bother me. Robbie Anderson. Robbie and Robbie Anderson. Yeah, they DJ got Moore. The yeah, DJ, DJ Moore. Moore is a good was one. who I was thinking I think, of. Yeah, so they have weapons. I think they've got weapons. Just, they've got talent. It's just time to time to do it over. Yeah, you know that defense was really strong a few years ago. You know it's beaten down now. And that is uh, your weekend roundup there. Another great show here from Denton, Texas, with, <laughs> with Mason, Mason Shepard and Ryan Baldwin. Baldwin. <laughs> Main event. <laughs> okay, this has been real fun. Bye, guys. <laughs>